Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you to the grand finale of DataStorm 2.0. DataStorm is the very first advanced data analytics competition in Sri Lanka organized by the Rotaract Club of University of Muratua in collaboration with the Rotaract Club of the Faculty of Science, University of Colombo, and is powered by Octave, the John Keels Group Data and Advanced Analytics Center of Excellence. DataStorm 2.0 consisted of five phases. And we are delighted to say that after a highly satisfying turn up of teams for registration, we conducted the Masterclass 1.0 for all the registered teams. And Masterclass 2.0 was then conducted for the top 15 teams selected as the finalists of Data Storm after the storming round. And today, we will be presenting to you the much awaited final rounds of the competition. As Pat Gelsinger would say, data is the new science and big data holds the answer. After a storming round that kept us at the edge of our seats, today would be undoubtedly a different experience as we will be starting the second competition round of Data Store. The case study and the Viva round for the 15 teams which made it so far has been concluded and the business pitching will commence today in front of the panel of judges present here with us. Stay tuned with us until the very end to witness the end of DataStorm 2.0 and we will be announcing the winners at the end of the final competition round. To welcome you all to this much-awaited grand finale, my cordial invitation is to Rotaractor Samila Imbulana, the president of the Rotaract Club of the University of Moratua. Over to you. A very good evening to all of you. Um, it is my privilege to welcome all of you to the grand finale of Data Storm 2.0. Data Storm is a project organized by the Rotaract Clubs of University of Moratua and the Rotaract Club of um, uh, Faculty of Science, University of Colombo, in collaboration with Octave, uh, the Advanced Analytics Center of John Keels Holdings. Um, we are at a time when data is of utmost importance. We have seen with the implications brought forward by COVID-19, businesses coming forward, leveraging more and more data and utilizing data to run their businesses. At a time such as that, uh, being two of the most premier technical universities in the country, University of Morto and University of Colombo have collaborated in bringing, bringing forward this, this data project uh, to instigate um, or rather start a data culture in the university system of Sri Lanka. We are organizing Data Storm for the second consecutive year and over the two year journey, the project has been extremely successful in bringing forward so many young talent in the country who are data enthusiasts and who are going to make, make change in the data field of Sri Lanka. So it is my privilege to warmly welcome uh, the judges uh, of the grand finale of Data Storm uh, 2.0. Uh, welcome, uh, uh, dear sirs and madams. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge honor. It's a huge honor to have you all here, um, and also. Um, the, the participants, the finalists of DataStorm 2.0. Uh, it has been a treat uh, seeing you guys perform in this competition. So all, we wish you all the very best in the finale to come. And also um, all the organizers and all the club members of the Rotra Club of University of Moratua and the Rotra Club of Faculty of Science, University of Colombo. And last but not, not least, all the viewers joining uh, from Facebook Live, uh, you, you know, who are joining, uh, here with us today. Uh, so we welcome all of you to the grand finale of, of Data Storm 2.0. Thank you, and I hope you'll have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much, Rotaractor Samila. Data Storm is a prominent platform which provides a perfect opportunity for undergraduates to engage with real world scenarios, leveraging cutting edge advanced data analysis technologies and obtaining a massive learning experience to lead strategic and innovative solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to introduce the honorable judges of Data Storm 2.0. We are pleased to announce Dr. Rajda Navaratna, Principal Data Scientist, Octave, 
and Mr. Anup Disanayake, data scientist and engineering associate, Octave, along with Mr. Thiraj Silva, data scientist at Octave, as our judges for the Viva round held on the 28th of March. Mr. Thiraj Silva and Mr. Asanga Gunawardana, data scientists at Octave, and Mr. Rakbu Pereira, analytics delivery associate at Octave, were present as the judges during the business pitching rounds. We are honored to announce senior lecturer at the Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering, Dr. Ranga Rodrigo, senior lecturer at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Dr. Thanuja Ambegoda, senior lecturer at the Faculty of Information Technology, Dr. Upeksha Ganegoda. Academic members of the University of Moratua as our judges for the both Viva and business pitching rounds of DataStorm 2.0. And now we will be moving on to the much awaited business pitch of the top five finalists. The top five finalists selected from the Viva round are Alpha Zero, Team Bots TND, Malkakulu, Random Forest Rangers, and Wanderers. We have Team Alpha Zero here with Janet Bonyarachi and Fernando and uh, Malisha Panagala. And uh, from the for the panelists, we have. Uh, uh, Dr. Ranga Rodrigo, Senior Lecturer at the Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering, University of Moratua. Dr. Thanuja Abegoda, Senior Lecturer at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, University of Moratua. Dr. Upeksha Ganegoda, uh, Senior Lecturer at Faculty of Information Technology, University of Moratua. Mr. Siraj Shil Silva, Data Scientist, Octave John Case Group. Mr. Asanga Gunavadana, Data Scientist, Octave John Case Group. And Mr. Rogbo Pereira, Data Analytics Delivery Associate. Octave John Kills Group. So, uh, team, you are off. You go with the uh, pitching. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Right. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can see yes. you. Uh, okay. The time starts now. Sure. <clears throat> so, um, hi. Good evening to everyone here. So, uh, we are Alpha Zero from, uh, from the University of Chile, Java, Dhanapura, and we are here to present our business product that we want to showcase from based on the case study that we did for DataStorm 2.0. So to give us brief introduction about the objectives, uh, there were two objectives that we targeted mainly, predicting customers or the clients with the capabilities of cross-selling and identify the products that they have the buying capabilities for. So when we started off, we had uh, a data set with monthly snapshots of every policyholder and data set of agents and their relevant information. What we wanted to go towards was a data set with each row containing a summary of the policyholder's history, a uh, target variable that uh, tells whether they have been cross-sold to earlier and a set of target variables depicting the products that, uh, that the customer has cross-sold to. And then finally, we wanted to fit two uh, models that can take on that two tasks. With regards to experiments, we did some experiments with regards to pre-processing and feature engineering. And uh, when it comes to pre-processing and feature engineering, we made uh, several uh, features that could uh, model their uh, buying power, their currently the number of policies that they're holding, and um, also their preferences uh, in terms of where they are in their life stage right now. And uh, with regards to feature selection, we used uh, statistical methods such as chi-square test and ANOVA, and we used a pair plot as well to identify the other features that would be most uh, appropriate for the model. And in addition, we used Baruta to identify the variables that were most important to model the first objective, which was the identifying the customers that were potential uh, cross-sellers. So with that in mind, we move on to the uh, model architecture. So the way that we tackled, tackled this task was we built two models, uh, a cross-selling model and a recommendation engine. So we took the transform policy data set, 
we fed it into the uh, Corsair probability model to get a probabilistic uh, estimate of the potential that a cl uh, client holds with regards to cross-selling. And we also built five models for the recommendation uh, engine with, for each product. And then we took the probabilities from each of these models and then uh, used max polling to identify the maximum, the, the product that gives the maximum uh, probability uh, with regards to recommending the products. So the two models will be running independently and we use random forest models in uh, all of these instances. Um, so that is with regards to what happened in the case study. Now let's talk about what this means for you, what this, what we have done, what it means for um, Octave, what it means for an insurance company, what, what does it uh, hold in value? So the key insights that we found was that modeling the buying power is a key component because uh, the number of total policies that a customer holds uh, is, has been a key, uh, key feature that identified uh, which customers had the more probability of being cross-sold to. And I believe in that sense, if we can collect more information on the other income means that the client have, if they are willing to disclose it, we'll go give more information about the buying power of the client so that we can identify which ones are the best ones to uh, cross-sell to. In addition, uh, with regards to data ingestion, there can be a bit more of optimization done because right now what we have is uh, monthly snapshots of every policy holder, which is cumbersome and we could take a lot of load on uh, in terms of storage and in terms of time when we retrain the model every month. Therefore, I believe it's best that if you can optimize the data ingestion by sending data only in significant effects such as payments or new policy creations so that we can build a uh, separate data engineering architecture with a probably a uh, publisher consumer relationship. So in addition to that, we can take on different modeling approaches for this task. And uh, one of them could be to uh, define different lives, uh, different stages in the life of a client and then model uh, separately model each of these instances uh, when it comes to uh, identifying the probability for cross-selling. And uh, in addition, we could also uh, build two separate models that uh, can be used for the customers who have already been cross-sold to and the customers who still have not uh, been cross-sold to. Uh, this, this helps us because we can then find out the gaps between the cross-sellings as well to uh, give a better estimate. So that was with regards to the key insights. But the end product that we want to showcase to you, the end product that we wish to build is a Bayesian approach to identifying potential customers to cross-sell, a reinforcement learning, for, uh, learning method for product recommendations, and evaluating model performance based on a simulated gym environment. The reason why we say a Bayesian approach would be ideal for this sort of a scenario is because the insurance domain has a, a, a wide history of domain knowledge that they can use and utilize for identifying uh, informative priors when it comes to um, when it comes to modeling the probability of customer of uh, cross selling, and with regards to uh, evaluating and recommending these products to the customers, a reinforcement learning method would be ideal. And with regards to evaluating it in production level, uh, here we have from the Mars Gym paper, a gym framework to model train and evaluate recommended systems from marketplace, a uh, evaluation method that is novel and that has been tested. Um, where a recommendation algorithm, an agent sends a recommendation to a simulated environment and where users uh, either buy it or they refuse it. And then we see from there whether these recommendations work best and therefore we can give a reward to the recommendation algorithm and evaluate how much of the recommendations were actually taken. And even though this paper is focused more towards a marketplace, we can ideally translate that entire paradigm into a insurance uh, domain as well. Um, that is one place that we can start on when it comes to evaluating uh, a recommendation engine such as that. But what does this mean for you as a stakeholder in an uh, insurance domain? For one thing, you can increase your ROI because what we saw from the data that we already had was that there was a five times increase uh, in ROI compared to targeting a broad audience because we had uh, 10,554 uh, clients in the, inside the entire testing data set. Uh, data set and from them only 1668 were actually cross-selling and if we take the cost and uh, the profits uh, into accounts and then if we calculate it we can see that there's a five times increase in the ROI 
And also we can retain the customer base better because if we are providing cross-selling products that the customer is preferred to buy, then we can retain our customers in our ecosystem without letting them turn into another service provider. And then uh, which would be harmful for our business as well and also would be uh, harmful for them as well. Um, with that, I end my presentation. Any questions? Uh, I can start with the question. Um, how how do we know? So what's your confidence in your model that you implemented already? Can you show us how can we trust? How can somebody trust the predictions coming out of this model? What's the uh, yeah, the confidence that I have in this model is that it will work based on the historical, uh, it will work based on the historical data we have been given. And so far when we, uh, attempted uh, to evaluate it based on the F1 score. We got a perfect F1 score and the uh, confusion metrics that uh, uh, divided the cu customers into two different groups. And uh, that is how we identified the five times increase as well. So that was the two metrics that we used to evaluate it. The confidence we have is uh, based on the historical data set, it is good, but I wouldn't say that it is production ready yet. So you pr proposed a very elegant solution as uh, as the end product. So yes. I would like to know what's the motivation of introducing a reinforcement learning framework as opposed to, let's say, doing the classification problem repeatedly, uh, periodically. The, the problem with doing a classification problem repeatedly is that in production, we might not be having the ground truth all the time so that we we can set this, uh, so we can, uh, based on the historical data, we can build a classification model and then let it loose in the production world. And then we don't know whether it's doing actually good or not. So we can, we can have a small evaluation where we predict something and then we see whether the user is actually doing it. But in reality, before putting it to production, we need to actually see whether it will do best on uh, a simulated environment. That's why I believe a reinforcement method would be better than going with the classical uh, classification approach so you're proposing to completely remove the classification approach and then replace it by a reinforcement approach for the product recommendations yes but uh, for the probably uh, for the cross-selling one i believe a classification one would be better but with more informative priors uh, with regards to a Bayesian approach yeah. hey um i just have a couple of questions here um, the first question is, um, in terms of your page on feature selection, um, yeah. I would like to get a better understanding in some of the main features and the main variables that you went with in your final model. So if you could just, um, um, yeah. And if you could just give an explanation of um, the impact that was driven by this particular, or the significance of these variables in terms of uh, predicting the target variable. So um, with regards to the feature selection part, uh, what we did was we used these uh, statistical methods to identify uh, these variables were important. So in the Boruta one, uh, the, uh, the Boruta model said that the number of, uh, the total number of policies were really useful. And uh, almost all of the features that we decided on the earlier feature engineering part were selected as a good uh, approach. So we went ahead with and uh, use because one thing that I noticed with regards to these uh, statistical methods is when the sample size is large, the, the result can be a bit inclus inconclusive, but regardless, we, we did these things as an experiment to see whether these features were correct in, uh, select, uh, correct in terms of selecting for a final model. But uh, when, select, when running the final model, we used the features that were we engineered completely and uh, most of them were had significant improvement in terms of uh, reduce uh, in terms of the Barut output. So we used all of them. Okay. And um, on the part on divide and conquer your modeling approach, where um, you 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 expressed two points, where one was that um, you could look at uh, the age segment of the customers. Um, and then um, and then split your intervention strategy uh, to each segment. Can you just 
provide just a little bit more detail in terms of how you can build an intervention strategy around this divide and conquer principle that you um, had on your slide. I think that was uh, um, below nine. I think after nine, yeah, after slide nine. Yeah. Um... Yes. Yeah. So, um, with re yeah. So, with regards to divide and conquer as an intervention, what we believe is that when uh, when we uh, divide the uh, divide the entire target audience into several age groups, and then we decide uh, to model them to build different models for each of them. The in terms of interventions, I believe we can identify key. Uh, second. Um, sorry. Uh, give me a second. I'm sorry. So, yes. Is so, this uh, divide and conquer strategy implemented in your solution? Um, uh, no, no, no. That's why I said uh, these are approach uh, modeling approaches that we can take on in the uh, future uh, mm -hmm. that we believe would be helpful as well. Um, with regards to, as I was saying, I'm sorry for the uh, inconvenience that happened earlier. So with regards to uh, dividing and conquering, we can find out the customers that are more uh, potential buyers of cross-selling products. And we can also see the products that have been more recommended in between each of age, uh, each age category. And then from there on, we can uh, identify the products that might be useful for them and then market those products more heavily for that age group instead of uh, marketing every uh, product for each every and every age group. What's the basis of saying, uh, let's say, for example, key insight number one, modeling the buyer power is a key component, you say. So what's the rationale? The rationale is that when we uh, model from the data set that we were given and the model that we built, the rationale is that we found that the total number of policies has been helpful in identifying the potential customers. With that, we have an idea that if a person is able to have multiple number of policies under his belt, then probably it is best that we uh, look into the buying power that he has to uh, purchase more uh, policies and then uh, to keep them active as well, active and then uh, change in different policies or whatnot. So we, that's why we believe that modeling the buying power is a key component uh, in terms of uh, identifying the customers that we can cross sell to. Uh, so, so are you saying this is like, it's your, uh... Logic, right? It, it, it did yeah. not come from the data. It's not a data-driven insight, is it? It is data-driven plus uh, a logical idea, as you said, because we do see from the data that the total number of policies do affect the, uh, do help in identifying the potential customers. And from there, we can uh, logically see that if the total number of policies are uh, affecting the, is helpful in identifying the customers, then it is clear that then the buying power is something that we should be looking into. That is how I made the two connections there. So yes, it's data driven plus a logical approach there. Uh, and in terms of the, yes, sorry. sorry. Please go ahead. Sure, thanks. Um, in terms of the interventions that you have in mind for this, uh, what are the financial metrics that you have identified that would have an impact in terms of driving value for the business? Um, financial interventions as in, uh, so financial as in, yeah, uh, so what we mainly considered was the ROI in terms of the ROI, basically what I was main uh, targeting one was the return on marketing investment. Basically the, if we consider that the revenue that comes from each and every person who uh, we market it to, and then, uh, we divide the revenue by the cost and then we see the ROI for it, we can see that the I targeting it, uh, like targeting it using our model where we can target it to a more specific audience who will buy it most likely will have give a approximately five times increase. That's the, the ROI was one financial metric that we considered in the business. A question on the key, key insights and features, right? So I noticed that we don't, we don't have uh, anything related to agents, uh, features or any insights on that. Is there a particular reason as to why that was not included? The reinforcement learning agents, you mean? Um, no, no. Uh, so any features on uh, agents? The, yes. So uh, we didn't use the agents data set because as far as we saw from it, uh, adding it didn't really 
uh, give an advantage in terms of uh, modeling the potential buying power because in the end what we wanted to model was the client side of uh, the, cl- the the features with based on the client side and the agents might be helpful but initially we thought adding that onto it might give us more data to work on but it also had unnecessary complications that were uh, delay our progress in terms of the time constraint that we have with 12 hours so because we wanted to get this demo out and uh, up and running we decided that it's best that we focus merely on the policy data set as a demo and a starting point and then after that if the data seems insufficient enough we can move on to the agents one and so far from the uh, the policy data set was a rich source of data quite rich and therefore i didn't see any use in going for the agents data set Dushan, is the time up for the presentation or the Q&A? Uh, yeah, if you just got one more minute, just uh, a quick question here is, um, what is the intervention cadence? How would you want to structure your intervention? What is the intervention plan? um in hmm. terms of um, getting customers across here yeah. so uh i believe what you're asking is as a an integration plan to integrate in this into a real life situation yeah. i believe yeah. so um with that i would mainly once we have the uh once we have the demo approved and everything what we would move on to is getting the data engineering part done and uh out of the way so because of that So currently we are just using a csv file but moving on we would want to have a continuous stream of data that comes and then uh, re- retrains the model and then gives better recommendations so because of that i believe first we will need to define uh, several docker containers one with uh, an api that can give recommendations uh, towards a, a dashboard that can be monitored from the uh, in- the agent side and uh, once we have dockerized the different components the the classification model and the recommendation model and we have exposed the apis then i believe then we can give a, a holistic view using a dashboard to the agent side so first we get the uh, integration part done by having a place to store the data set and having a method to uh, stream the data set from the data in, uh, inputting stations so once that is done we can set up the pipeline uh using cube flow or um yeah you can we can use cube flow and uh, use dremio to hold the data set and then from their own uh maybe we can use even kafka to stream the data set into dremio and then using cube flow we can uh build the pipeline for the data to be transformed and then uh, feed it inside to uh dremio back again to be used by the two docker containers for one is the cl- uh, the classification model and the recommendation model all used up to uh, build the dashboard probably in power bi or google data studio as this is all from my end um, i have one follow up a very short one um you yeah. s- you mentioned you had a perfect f1 score was it so you had two more uh, two models right you had f- had to first uh, for the-, the first objective that was the and the second one score. how was the performance uh the second one didn't perform that well um mainly uh because we were mainly because we were using like different five models and most of those models worked around uh, 0.5 0.6 levels for all those five models okay thank you that's all Okay, judges. Uh, since the time constraint, if the presentation questions and uh, queries are over, we can end this uh, pitching session for Team Alpha Zero. Brilliant! Thank you so much for your time, guys. Thank you as well, panelists, for giving us all this opportunity and the feedback as well. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you team Alpha Zero for joining. Uh, you may now leave the breakout room. Thank you.
Okay, we have all three members from uh, Team Bots ND, D &D, uh, to this uh, pitching session. A small reminder before I announce the, uh, tell the names of the competition competitors. That is, uh, you will be given a screen with the countdown, countdown timer. Uh, you can pin it to your screen in order to keep track of time. Each uh, team will be given uh, six minutes for this uh, pitching session, and the judges will take nine minutes for their queries. So we have uh, Devin De Silva uh, and Nippon Bilaga and Tarendu Vikramasinghe from Team Bots TND. Off you go, Team Bots TND. The timer will start as soon as you start the presentation. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, we are Team Bots TND and uh, this is our uh, target for today uh, to explain what we did and uh, basically it was to identify clients who are cross-selling based on the policies and then to recommend the life insurance either policy or product uh, we as a team decided to go with product-based recommendations so these are the five health investment retirement education and protection so uh, a small note we will be using these images so that's why i uh, explained it in the future slides as well and then finally to provide business insights so in the analytical model what we did was to predict first uh, which person is more likely or to get a probability and predict which person is uh, more likely to Excuse me, can we have your videos on uh, because there are marks for that talk so okay um, uh, to uh, predict whether a customer is uh, more probable for cross-selling. So that was the first part. And the second part was a recommendation. That means uh, to recommend what product is best suitable for that customer. As we explained in the Viva, these are the steps that we followed. Uh, and uh, the predicting part was done using this strategy, converting our uh, prediction problem into a binary classification problem. That means to classify whether is a cross-selling person or not. And there are some reasons we did that without going for a classical time series analysis. We did this because we were we thought we found that it was easier to generate the features, time variant invariant features, and go for a classification binary problem instead of going for a classical time series prediction problem. Uh, and then uh, uh, there were some other reasons that we will explain further. Uh, and this is the voting classifier model that we wanted to do. That means we are based on a time scale. If we are going with one month, we are, we are always predicting what would happen in the next month. So uh, like that, implement it for one, two, three, four, five, and six months, and then use each month's vote. And the highest vote, if it's a yes, it's a cross-selling person, then we consider it as a cross-sell that's going to happen. So that's how we classify. And for each individual model, we have this uh, structure of the data pipeline that we explained earlier. And finally, uh, we have to recommend. So for the recommendation, we used collaborative filtering based recommendation where uh, the collaborative filter is based on the product mapping and also the user mapping. So uh, it was easier to engineer uh, products for this rather than uh, uh, ratings so that uh, a, a classical recommendation system was difficult so we went with this and we used association rule mining uh, so that means finding patterns of people buying products and then as you can see if, if a person buys health health and then goes for education like that trying to find patterns in people and then try to recommend the best product uh, suitable for the person and uh, the feature engineering part, you can see the raw features that we have. Again, the colors represent some sort of a possible correlation. For example, the green color for financial and the uh, yellow and pink colors for personal information. We engineered them so that we could get a time variant features, more time variant features that are more suitable for our model. The first one is the, uh, no, the final features. We have the client and the month. So that's more of an index. The green colored features are more financial related. And then the next one is more region oriented, geographical location oriented. And the third, uh, the 
done before that uh, is personal information that the person can't control, but things that he's born with or things that uh, he has as personal information. And the final one is the target variable. So we did that for a given client for a given month. For, uh, for example, if you have one month as our time limit, otherwise it's for two months like that. And then we did some EDA. So we have some results from the EDA and this is one example we did a lot more. Uh, so this, the, was, this one explains that we have very many people going for health related policies rather than other ones. It's the most popular one. And uh, the investment retirement one, education and like that, it's a decreasing one. So if you are going for a, a prediction or a recommendation from the business perspective, we can use insights from this uh, to go for a more uh, causal analysis later. And we go for the business insights uh, that we can give based on the EDA that we have. Uh, if we have time, we could have done more, like we, we could have gone for a causal analysis, for example, using Microsoft's do I uh, library, like to confirm whether the correlation actually means causality. We could have done that, that we were hard on time. So we just limited our recommendations to uh, inferences to the ones we got from the EDA. So these are the, again, the products uh, and then uh, the features that uh, we expect or we suspect that could be used and that could uh, be could give us indicators of what we can give back to the company as strategies. And uh, then finally, we divided roughly into a marketing, more marketing perspective of the company and then a more strategic perspective of the company. For example, if they are presenting this to a board of directors. And uh, the marketing side is, for example, for a team of marketeers who want to really target on a personal level each customer. So just taking one example, if you are going for retirement, uh, we see if we can see from our time analysis that a person uh, fits to this category, to this category that uh, is more uh, likely to go for a retirement option, or if it suits that better, we could recommend it uh, based on his age, his occupation, whether his spouse is uh, old or not, whether the children are able to take care of him or not, whether uh, he's in a region where there are more elderly people or whether in a region where there are more people who take retirement plans. So we could go for emotional marketing like most companies do market for their emotions and their localities say that their friends are also using it. So it's a good plan to go for and we could, or we could focus on families like uh, we could say that uh, since you're a loyal customer, we could maintain, it's a more long-term thing. We could maintain relationships with the customer for a longer period of time. So by the time a person is old uh, from his forties all the way until his seventies, we could say that uh, uh, he's more likely to get uh, into uh, our option. And then uh, that sort of strategy and marketing ideas we have presented. And for the improvements that we could have done, uh, was to repeat this module. So we did it for one month. So we could have done it for two, three, four months and really got a more, uh, gotten a more accurate result. We did it just for one month for this task yesterday. We could have done it uh, actually for two, three, four, five and six and then combined it. As we set up our target, we couldn't do it. We just stuck with one month and used that for our whole prediction that gave us a little less accurate results, we believe. And then we could have extracted more features based on native policy information, just based on the policy information. Uh, we just got policy information based on other uh, like uh, proxy variables using uh, the, uh, the data on the clients, the timestamps, and just uh, we inferred the policy information. If we had more information on policy, it's like if this certain policy had this product mix, we could have gone for a more uh, general or uh, not general, a more specific uh, recommendation by clustering those policies and then uh, really going in deep into what type of a policy that we could recommend. And uh, then again, do our previous analysis and recommend a product as well. So right now we are recommending a product. We could have recommended a product and a policy uh, if we had a bit more resources. And we could have generated more time variant features, I believe, but uh, I think we did, uh, a good job with the time constraints that we had. And uh, that's it for our presentation. I believe we are on time. Thank you.
Um, can you mention some accuracies, uh, some performance criteria and data uh, scores yeah. about your models, please? Sure, uh, but uh, we forgot to input in here uh, in the final model for the for month uh, we got uh, eighty seven point six accuracy uh, and uh, because uh, at the uh, second stage in the uh, dual stacking uh, our uh, model uh, also uh, we did the uh, inference analysis uh, to understand how the uh, base models behave with the data set to uh, uh, suit uh, choose uh, most probable and most suitable uh, base models to input to the dual stack uh, ensemble model uh, in there uh, we got uh, like uh, 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 four or six models uh, uh, accuracy mean higher than uh, 75% uh, and one one uh, model in uh, raw XGBoost get uh, 64% uh, accuracy at this level. Sorry for that. It was uh, we missed so yeah. I, it, for me, it was not clear. So, so you had uh, two parts, right? For the binary classification of being able to cross sell, and also then the recommendation part, right? Yeah. I, uh, Can you the, separately say I, I was? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay. For the recommendation system. Uh, we got 97% accuracy because there was only five uh, products uh, because uh, in collaborative fielding, it's uh, pretty easy. That because we got 95%, 97% five accuracy on those. I'm really sorry. Oh. It, it's okay. And for the first part, can you say something about the font score? Yeah, we didn't uh, uh, add a font score. We trained on the um, ROCA, you see. Uh, it's cool, but uh, we didn't invest. I means we train and parameter tune on that, but we infer only accuracy. That that's why I can't tell the ROC AUC score. Can you please go to the slide where I showed the model? Uh, you had this uh, methodology slide. Oh, yeah, I think this is uh, the one after, please. Uh, okay. So you use an ensemble of these models for the classifier too. Is it for the binary classifier? It's not clear. For yeah, me at least. yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is the binary classifier. It's a stacked for one month period binary classifier. We had used, have used those for uh, four. This is to predict the cross set with the. Yeah. Upper particular customer and this month is using uh, is taking a cross set right so use a bunch of classifiers like sv mada boost random forest extra tree and then yeah. what do you do uh, at the training phase uh, we uh, get uh, the uh, results from those by using out of fold prediction method uh, to uh, feed into the XT boost model as a dualistic stack ensemble model. So we train XT boost on that uh, results go out from the out of fold prediction data set. I, oh, why did you do that? Yeah, uh, the main reason, because uh, if we had used a one uh, classification model, uh, we will miss uh, some uh, uh, <coughs> parts of the uh, 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 behavior of data, I mean, some uh, classification models are very best at the uh, low data uh, variation and not the high data variation, something like that, uh, random for us, especially. But uh, in uh, smooth uh, edge uh, classification, SVM model uh, perform very well. But uh, yeah, we use uh, two double stack ensemble viewers. We can uh, 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 get together all those performance into one. So we'll. Uh, Suppose it will it, it will give very good results as well as it gave very good results. I'll let someone thank you. I'll let someone else ask questions. Uh, yeah, Nibun, um, in your improve uh, slide on improvements, you have mentioned uh, uh, clustering analysis. Yeah. How, yeah. How are you going to use this okay. here? 
the reason for use cluster analysis because uh, uh, I will first try to uh, predict products, re recommend product as well as policies, but they are up more than 300, 3,200 3, policies. So if we had used, it will break. So uh, here our idea is to cluster those, all those policies into uh, like uh, 15 or 20 groups and we can uh, uh, recommend that uh, cluster as well with the suitable product. That's the reason we have. Got it. And when you, uh, in your classification model, when you predict uh, that these are the most likely customers uh, that you could cross sell, um, how would you choose, like how do you uh, select the best customers or you're gonna just go ahead with uh, uh, all the customers, yeah. I mean, uh, we had done a binary classifier, all those, uh, we parameter tune uh, on the score of, AUC IROC curve, so it will uh, similarly perform as the uh, precision recall curve to uh, adjust the uh, 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 cutting point of zero to one. So, uh, uh, so uh, we uh, doesn't uh, bring up the probabilities. Also, uh, we had idea to uh, bring up the probabilities because uh, instead of using voting classifier, uh, we will we can uh, use uh, moving average to get final uh, uh, probabilities of a person can do, will do a, a cross sell or not, but we just stop in the binary classifier. I think I will give correct. Yeah, um, yeah, I think probability of uh, the exact prediction is something what you look at. Apart from that, is there any other? criteria that you think you should look at based on uh, certain customer yeah, attributes really uh, we yeah. uh, it because of the time constraint we can't do a yeah. panel analysis to understand how features uh, perform in time to understand feature invariance of feature variant uh, variance of features so we are not very much sure and also we can't uh, we unable to do vif means uh, variation in fluctuation uh, to understand how uh, our engineered features uh, multi-core made multi linearity with each other. So we'll not very much go. Perfect. We can't go into that. Yeah. Thanks. Nathan. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So with regard to the business model that you are trying to pitch here, then how are you going to understand that uh, the customers can be retained in the company and what are the customers can get benefit by using this particular model uh, from the company? Like uh, how are you going to uh, make sure your business model will be work, here, work properly for the given company? How to make uh, sure that? Yes, uh, so our whole premise is based on providing a more personalized service. So we hope that by providing a more personal, in general insurance companies tend to do that, to give a more personalized service. But our pitch here is to make it better by looking at his patterns. So it's basically a recommender system. Uh, so we believe like YouTube suggests videos, we are going to suggest policies for him catered to that unique individual. So our business pitch from that point of view, we are trying to say that this model is better at giving a more personalized service so that uh, both the insurance company from that point of view, he will get more customers hopefully by having a more personalized service by providing the, to the customers and through that they can market it as well as providing more personalized service or through word of mouth and the good name of the company and from the customer's perspective we believe that when a customer especially for things like health and retirement they care more when there is a more personalized service so that's why we try to base our uh, model on that providing a more uh, custom tailored version of insurance policies to him so uh, how we do it uh, after we do this modeling uh, we suggest for the CEO or the strategy part of the company to 
do something related to this. So, for example, he can introduce more riders that are more tailored for a health plan that makes a person already in a retirement plan more accustomed to the company and more willing to buy a health plan. Or he could go for a, uh, or the marketing team could go for a, a place where they could emotionally, as I explained, uh, explained before, they could go for an emotional marketing campaign based on people's experiences and feelings. And from that point of view, try to attract customers uh, from uh, a point where uh, the company is positioning themselves as catering towards people, not profit. So trying to achieve a win-win on both sides. So thereby the, com the people would get more uh, incentivized to join the company and the insurance company will benefit as well. Right, from the data set that you are uh, work with it, uh, like what type of uh, patterns that you have identified, like uh, Amar, when you try to do the classification, what type of patterns you have come across? Yes, uh, so the patterns that we found were that uh, generally the information, uh, there were a lack of information on this personal side. We believe that because people didn't really like to give their personal information that much away, or maybe because most information about 50% was not there about the spouse or about the children. But the 45% that had information also, for example, children had only given information about the first child, uh, information about the second, third, and maybe most families don't have three children now. Information about more than two children were very rare. And then uh, uh, the smoking flag, the entry age, that those type of information that are generally mandatory in filling out a form, were there. So we used those types of information and during these speech engineering stages, we dropped uh, most of the uh, very scarce uh, variables and tried to combine it into our time series model. And for example, uh, and we used this agent code with the supervisor uh, or the agent code with the customer to form a link between the customer and the supervisor so that then we could get information about the region code, the cluster code, uh, and what sort of a uh, uh, supervisor he see under whether it's a general uh, agent or with someone higher like a regional manager or something so that we could get an idea about the regionality or the locality of the customer we we only used the agent for that but had we had a bit more information on the policies we could have used uh, that information as well to see whether that particular agent is more experienced in this type of a policy or not so for now for with the data set we had we just made a connection between the agent and the customer and use that to find the locality or information about the locality. And the green area is mainly financial. Uh, so uh, the payment date, the may payment method, cash or credit, mostly about 80% had preferred cash uh, and mostly about eight, again 75% preferred monthly deposits. So that was usually expected uh, for a typical uh, Sri Lankan society and we, see, we saw that. And most didn't use riders but some used basically it was a very imbalanced data set so we had a very hard time trying to figure something out but in the end we did it uh, so i think i explained personal details financial details agent details and uh, this com commencement date policy term policy status mainly related to the policy but it was just as a, we used that as a uh, indicator to find out whether a person is uh, more likely to complete his term or whether he has dropped out. Other than that, we didn't much use these types of data. And uh, this termination date and reason, uh, the reason wasn't very uh, useful. We just used the termination date to see whether he has terminated at a given point in time. Uh, so that was the raw features. And we, as I explained before, went to the final okay. features. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, dear judges, will there be any more questions? Because uh, we have the time constraint also. Uh, not from me. Not from me, too, sir. I think from me. 
okay sir uh what's key in the then uh, i think uh, now we you can uh, leave this breakout room and uh we'll hope uh, you have a, a great place in the finals as well uh you may now leave this and wake up room. thanks for joining thank you thank you very much thank you thank you thank you Okay, we have uh, the three team members from Team Malkakulu. Uh, welcome to the pitching session. Uh, we have Pasan Gunavadana, Kavin Daimburgoda, and Viluksha Madhushan from Team Malkakulu. A small reminder to the team members, your team will be given six minutes for your presentation, and then there will be nine minutes for the judges to ask queries from you. So please make sure you have pinned the screen with the countdown timer, so it will be easier for you to keep track of time. Now you may start uh, sharing your screen. Okay, I'll stop my video. Then uh, your timer of six minutes will start once you start the presentation. Good luck. Uh, so do I start now? Or? Please have your videos on because uh, there will be marks for that. Okay, sure. So, um, we are the Malkakulu presenting our recommender system, Insure Recommender System. So, let's begin with the introduction. So, in the problem given, the ABC company requires to identify the processing customers and to recommend the perfectly suited insurance policies. So, what are insure recommended system provides are the insights on their customer basis through the dashboards and provide the possibility of a customer to cross sell and of course, recommend the best insurance policies for them. So when we search some similar type of models, we found a recommended system of American family insurance company and a recommended system for car insurance, actually it was posted in the Sprinkling website but they are not specialized for Sri Lankan context and they do not provide very in great insights about customer basis. So moving on to the methodology, we first created some dashboards using the data sets to identify the relationship between the features and to get some window. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Avindu, can you start? Uh, yeah, can you move on to the next slide? Yes. Yes. Uh, let's move on to the methodology. We propose two systems, uh, cost sell probability prediction system and the recommendation, uh, recommendation system. Uh, talking about the cost sell probability prediction system, First, we define the target variable. Then obviously we, uh, we do the merger of two data sets because we are given two data sets. Then feature creation and selection. Talking about the feature creation, uh, creation and selection, we created the uh, features like uh, customer age because we are not given the age. Uh, we, uh, we created the uh, age with the time uh, given time snapshot. Then uh, obviously we did the data modeling part and we uh, provide the results with, uh, with probabilistic, uh, uh, probabilistic function. Uh, then talking about the recommendation system, Recommendation system is an algorithm that suggests items to people uh, that uh, more probably they will like. The our idea uh, of uh, idea of our model is uh, is the similarity of customers using collaborative filtering technique. So obviously, highest probability will be the suggested product. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, uh, we did some experiment on uh, both cross-sell probability prediction and the recommendation system. Uh, obviously, uh, cost, uh, when it comes to cost sale probability prediction, we, our target variable was cost, sale, uh, cost selling or uh, whether to cost sell or not. 
uh, then the, we tried with the existing algorithm like XGBoost, ChatBoost, and Random Forest. Uh, and uh, uh, our our first our idea was to uh, build up a class in LSTM layer because it, uh, it is uh, and within the time period, it means uh, before 10, of, uh, 10 p.m. yesterday, we, can, uh, we could not uh, finalize our uh, result in this model. Uh, however, this, this was our uh, first uh, idea. And talking about the uh, recommendation system, our target variable was obviously insurance, pol uh, insurance policy. Uh, and uh, we tried with a uh, neural network and also we tried, uh, tried with the cat boost, uh, tried with the cat boost, cat boost algorithm, cat algorithm. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, uh, talking about the intervention, uh, obviously with our model, they can identify the course where customers and their background. And obviously, uh, one special thing is to uh, we can uh, 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 they can identify the best cost selling strategies for them. And one special one most beautiful thing of our product is specialized for uh, this is specialized for Sri Lankan context. And talking about the key insights, we uh, we may identify the uh, uh, some uh, uh, we uh, we recommend some ex changes to the existing data fields and obviously we recommend adding some valuable data fields like customer age and obviously uh, we uh, we saw that uh, with the data and with our data analysis with our power bi data uh, dashboard we saw that uh, business months are 10 for more cost selling and obviously monthly payment customers are 10 for less these are uh, some valuable key insights that we can do with our uh, with our product uh, moving on to the next slide Uh, for the improvement, obviously we did our part with the, within the one day. It means within 14 days. Uh, with the given time, we can obviously add more value to the data and identify more features. And the system, uh, we can improve our system, uh, system to system for identification of client termination, customer classification, and the recommendation of rider. It means for upselling. And we also uh, we can we can improve our model until uh, we can. Uh, until we provide a best cost selling strategy, like how, how much of a discount, how, uh, what should we uh, do with this customer like that. Uh, and finally, thank you. Uh, thank you uh, on behalf of Team Malakakulu. And obviously, we hope uh, you would buy our product, Insurex. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, can you uh, please go to the slide where you showed uh, the methods? Uh, I think. Yeah, Actually, sure. first, I would like to know about something about feature engineering. So, uh, what were the features that you thought the most insightful? I think probably that slide we couldn't hear much about, right? The uh, the EDA slide. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Can you please walk us through this slide? Is this the slide? Show yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, Either I missed one. it or yeah, this one. I, I also missed it. Uh, Kavinda, please go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this uh, actually, um, we have created some uh, dashboards using the data sets you've given, and um, and we found some um, like insights uh, we found some relationships uh, with the features like uh, here if you can see uh, the health insurance is the most uh, bought uh, uh, insurance policy and most famous insurance policy through the uh, customers and uh, here you can see like uh, most of the customers uh, of this uh, abc insurance pol uh, insurance company are the businessmen ministers and here you can see such uh, informations were like identified and then we mount the feature engineering part we have uh, extracted some columns as it is but some columns we had to do some um, transformations as they are uh, in categorical uh, format um, so and uh, of course some uh, columns we have uh, like calculated the those values and taken as a feature for an example um, uh, you know uh, they have given the main holders date of birth 
So, and they also given the a snapshot date. So by using the date difference, we can actually calculate the main holders age to the particular snapshot date. So such informations are calculated and uh, uh, taken into the training set. Avinda, uh, what were your most um, important features in the model? Um, uh, uh, like when we, um, the, the most, uh, uh, should I come? Yeah. Uh, yeah, like which features were very good predictors for the classification model? Um, um, actually, uh, um, so as you can see, the uh, most, um, um, uh, correlated, uh, features are the uh, status lapsed and, uh, uh, total sum assured and, uh, uh, such fields are the uh, had, does have the highest uh, correlated values. Um, Kavinda, uh, just a question on the interventions page that you presented. Yeah. Um, yeah. In that, it said that um, once you identified the customers for cross sale, that uh, that would be cross sell strategies. But can you tell us what those strategies are exactly? Like. Uh, what would be the typical intervention plan in terms of, um, you know, cross-selling products to a given customer with a high probability of cross-selling? Uh, uh, yes, sir. talking about the cross-selling strategy, we do, uh, I mean, uh, as with the given time, we did not move to the uh, basic of the uh, cross-selling strategies, but we identified some strategies like uh, how, uh, when, uh, when we are going to a uh, uh, present a cross-selling uh, cross product for, for a customer, what kind of discount percentage that we should give, what kind of percentage that uh, discount percentage that he can bear with our product, uh, and also uh, what what kind of customers uh, can identify, uh, can understand uh, if we present a business plan to their future. I mean, uh, either it is a retirement plan, either it is a business, I mean, either it is a business protection plan, either it is a family plan, or uh, those uh, kind of uh, key uh, I mean, interventions can be given through uh, can I mean uh, if we have if we had time can be given through the uh, our model sir. Hello. Okay, understood. Okay. Um, in terms of um, business impact, um, what is the added value brought in from this? Like, have you got an analysis in terms of the financial upliftment from this use case, from this particular proposal? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, one thing we should talk about that, I mean, we, this is where we began to uh, approach the approach uh, to the question. Uh, the point that is given, only, at, only around 3% of clients are going for a cost sale. That means, uh, most of the field, if we add more data for a data point, if we add more data field, that means our our model is going to uh, with the bogus. Uh, that means they are most of the. Uh, Sorry, we just lost it. Yeah. Hello, hello, Kavindu. Okay. Um, so, Kavita, actually, on the point of adding more data fields, can you uh, give us some examples of um, data fields that you would like to have in the data set? Uh, yes, uh, obviously, uh, data uh, that uh, data field we are uh, we are I mean, uh, add, add is the uh, age, customer age. That is, uh, we believe as a team, we believe sir, that that would be a major impact uh, for the our model, sir. Uh, because we have created that uh, uh, that one, but uh, but we obviously think that that will be a very uh, uh, a very uh, very good op uh, uh, option for our model. And obviously, sir, uh, there's one thing. Uh, uh, I mean, 
uh, one thing we identified that uh, ob- when we are thinking about humanly i mean human thinking businessmen have ups and downs rather than the other 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 ups, other other opportunities this uh, this might affect the uh, our our business i mean uh, the insurance company this might affect because uh, uh, within the, we, as we all as we all know uh, businessmen have uh, like uh, at the top of the tree uh, uh, today uh, within uh, 30 days uh, he will at the bottom of the line so that kind of things uh, uh, we can uh, we can understand through the data sets uh, but obviously we cannot feed that to the our models uh, at the moment understand not identify that to our model but it so what you're saying is essentially that you would want to uh, create different intervention strategies based on the occupation of the policy holder yes. yes and, and we we uh, as a team we strongly strongly recommend that any other yeah. any other recommend system we strongly recommend uh, i mean we strongly believe that that will be a really good opportunity sir option and talking about this uh, the graph that you can see here uh, most of the uh, most of the uh, insurance policies are bought by the male a male person uh, i know that this is a little bit uh, i i mean but if we can find a uh, marketing strategy for females like uh, female uh, uh, society that would be a really interesting for the company uh, for the abc company uh, i mean in specialized for women um in the last row middle the pie chart i see that there are 1650 ministers so these are i, I, I was just curious so these are ministers like down the ministers what do you think uh, i don't know what's the job uh, description no, uh, no sir obviously this is a uh, uh, this i uh, mean the given snapshots are timely i mean uh, one one ah. uh, one person have 20 snapshots Uh, that uh, that is how the data set is given so obviously we have to do the uh, like uh, pre processing uh, really uh, really good um, is not i mean uh, really time consuming uh, pre processing part we had to do a good time uh, pre processing part uh, and uh, we pre processed until like 3 o'clock <laughs> from 8 of 8 morning to 3 o'clock we did the pre processing uh, part then obviously uh, we moved to the data uh, data modeling part So what you're saying is that that that's that this pie chart doesn't give the unique count of occupation holders, is it? That is yeah, just uh, uh, yes, sir. Because obviously this is this pie chart is belongs to the given data set, sir. Uh, this is not a uh, uh, this is not. No, no uh, what I'm what I'm asking is, um, have you computed the unique count, or as I said, like the snapshot count? Because if it's the snapshot count, you'll be double counting some ministers and businessmen and exercise guards, right? Uh, yes, uh, yes, there's a problem. Can you just go back to the previous slide just to see the two methods, the details? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah not okay. for our model that would be relevant but uh, try to calculate the uh, like uh, unique uh, unique numbers there okay so you mentioned you've uh, finished the first part and the second part was not up and running uh, can you say a bit about the uh, the performances of what you have uh, second running? part means sir the the uh, recommendation system so anyway uh, yeah. just uh, give us yes, some yeah. inputs yeah. about the performance uh yes actually uh, we, we did the both parts but uh, uh we we uh, we we, want, we are not uh, able to uh, implement the neural network uh, part uh, neural network model uh, but uh, actually we uh, uh, we did both models from uh, the first one was uh, the cross sale probability prediction system and the second part is recommendation uh, recommendation system so in the rec- so i think you are asking about the recommendation system right i would like i would like to know uh, the uh, performance of both separately okay uh, 
how to can you explain the first part uh, then i can move to the recommendation system part uh, yes sir uh, talking about uh, sir actually uh, we did not have uh, i should mention that we did not have time to evaluate our model sir uh, but obviously what we did was first uh, in the, uh, in the methodology like you can see sir we first did the define the target variable as i mentioned before then uh, with the given data set uh, there are a data set for uh, agent data then there are a data set for customer data uh, obviously we uh, uh, feature uh, through the feature selection we uh, we uh, select the feature uh, yeah obviously we have to mention that uh, we created the feature with the uh, customer basis of the agent uh, that uh, that feature we created actually uh, that uh, so and also Uh, with the data modeling part and uh, obviously uh, we did uh, we did uh, three uh, three parts yeah uh, three models xgboost cat catboost and the random forest but uh, we did not evaluate our result but uh, with our i mean with our guts i mean with our experience i know we have a little a little experience but with our experience we know that this kind of stuff uh, this kind of data set uh, will more accurate with the xgboost I mean, we feel that so we obviously go with the results with the uh, XGBoost algorithm. Uh, over to you, uh, Biluksha. Okay, so in the recommendation system, uh, so we identify, so we uh, we, we we try to understand the data set, and uh, we uh, when we uh, talk about the data set, we we, uh, we identify it. The data set is uh, most about the users' information. So. uh definitely we have to use the collaborative filtering for that because uh, the thing is we need to find the similarity between users so what we are trying to do is uh, we train a new model to uh, uh, do the collaborative filtering uh, which means uh, we try to uh, train the similarity between users and the target variable was uh, the, the yeah the target variable was the products so what we are trying to do is uh, Uh, when we uh, make a uh, sorry, uh, when we consider about a user, uh, there there are uh, five output targets uh, for that particular user. Uh, it means the products. So if if uh, if if someone uh, already brought a product, we give to one. If uh, he do, doesn't uh, buy that product, uh, we give to zero. So using this uh, pre-trained uh, pre-processed data set, uh, we train our classifier. using cat boost uh, we we try to use a neural network but it doesn't work so finally we have to use a uh, cat boost so what the cat boost uh, give output is it's a give a um, uh, five dimension array dimension of five uh, array uh, for a particular user uh, with the probability value so what uh, what what is the suggesting product is the highest probability. the suggesting project product and in the, also you have to consider if we already brought this product earlier we have to go the second highest probability so likewise uh, so that's the concept of our model so uh, the model is going to learn the similarity of the users so similar users normally brought uh, similar uh, packages similar products so that's the key idea that we are trying to implement Uh, in this uh, project but uh, also the with, uh, with the time limitation we can couldn't evaluate this results uh, but our main target was to implement a collaborative filtering technique for uh, suited for uh, this data set actually okay thank you that's all for me um judges do we have any more questions not from me rooks uh, oh okay so, um not from me as well i do am okay yeah me too thank you okay Team Alkaku, thank you for presentation, and we'll announce. Uh, we'll announce. Oh, we'll announce the results uh, in a minute, and. Uh,
Thanks for joining. Now uh, you may leave the breakout room. Okay. Uh, thank you for your, uh, giving this opportunity, I say. Hello, team uh, Random for a Strangers. We have uh, Nishal Ranasinghe, Vidura Sumanasena, and Amila Ravina. A small reminder to all of you that your team will be getting six minutes for your presentation, and then there will be nine minutes for the queries by the judges. Please do pin the screen sharing the timer countdown that will be easier for you to keep the track of time. Now you may uh, share your screen. Let me stop this uh, screen sharing. Your timer countdown will start as soon as you start the presentation. <coughs> Is my screen visible? Yes, we can see it. Okay, good luck. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Nisar from team Random for Strangers. Uh, so here to uh, present our business page. Uh, so do you guys know uh, how valuable the insurance industry is right now at the moment worldwide? It's around $6.3 trillion. Sorry, if In possible, a... can you please turn on your camera? <clears throat> yes, sure. Yeah. Hi, I uh, hope you can all see me. Yes, we can see you. Michelle. Yeah. So, in such a vast industry, uh, in this age of data, uh, analytics and machine learning would always be an integral part. So, in the case study round, we actually got to experience this, uh, where we uh, developed an analytics solution based on the data set that we put, that was given to us. And we try to uh, identify cross-sell opportunities of an insurance company. We had access to data collected over 1.5 years. And our objective was to generate some business value by identifying opportunities for future cross-sells. Just going through the methodology, uh, we had two, two main objectives. One was to uh, identify uh, uh, customers to whom, uh, who, who is like to likely to cross sell. And the other one was to identify uh, the best cross sell recommendation that we can give to uh, a specific customer. <clears throat> Starting off, we, uh, to prepare a data set, uh, we use data from a single snapshot. So our, our data set consists of, consisted of multiple snapshots uh, that were about one month apart. Uh, so we took data from one snapshot to be the features of our model. And the labels were derived from the next six snapshots, which spanned across six months. For the cross-sell propensity model, our label was a simple yes, no, uh, which indicated whether the customer has uh, done a cross-sell or not within the next uh, six months period. And for the recommendation, our label was the cross-sell product that the customer has taken uh, with, which had the highest premium. So if he, uh, if he has taken multiple products, uh, we took the one with the highest premium. We generated multiple, uh, we generated more data by taking additional samples generated by using a rolling window over the snapshot. So we started from the snap first snapshot and the labels were the uh, next six months. Then we took the next snapshot and the labels as the uh, six months after that and so on. So once we started uh, building the model, uh, after creating the label data set, <clears throat> we started with a very basic baseline model, which consisted of uh, just very simple features, customer features. And then we started adding new features that we engineered and new features that we can take from the data set while measuring the performance. Uh, the performance was measured by doing a time series, uh, uh, time series split. So we took a certain set of months as the uh, training set and the next set of months as the uh, test set. So that was to avoid uh, any uh, the model being biased to just a single time period. We use multiple machine learning models to compare performance. Uh, we use random forest like GBM, XGBoost, ADA Boost, and CatBoost. 
uh, we ran a hyperparameter tuning uh, using grid search with stratified k fold cross validation. Uh, so the best model that we had uh, for the cross cell propensity model, which was a binary classifier, we measured it the performance using ROC UC, uh, uh, which amounted to around 79.6%. And the cross-site recommendation model had a macro F1 score of around 51%. So the best performing models uh, had these performance metrics and we can uh, see the confusion matrix as well. So once we developed the uh, analytic solution, the machine learning model, the <clears throat> it's not like from business perspective, just having a machine learning model is not enough. So we need to show what the business value is and what are the insights that we can generate from this model. The business insight. So some of the key insights that we generated were that uh, one was that uh, customers with more rider policies that are added on to the main policy are more likely to cross sell. And we saw that the customer's occupation greatly affected his propensity to cross sell. And also we noticed that uh, customers with higher rider premiums uh, tend to cross sell more often. And uh, during the EDA, we saw that the number of policies uh, per customer, average number of policies had increased over time, uh, which can be seen as a healthy trend uh, for, the, for the business. Uh, so then uh, <clears throat> we wanted to quantify the business value that we can generate from this model. So if we look at the data set uh, in a six month window, the average cross sell rate or the average number of customers uh, who would actually go for a cross sell is around 2%. But if you take the base that the model predicts, the, the model that we develop, if you take the base that it predicts as a cross sell, uh, around 6% of those customers actually uh, have gone for a cross sell based on the testing data set data. So that is around a three times improvement over a non machine learning approach. Finally, we have uh, some proposed interventions, uh, some recommendations for the insurance company uh, to increase their profitability through, uh, through cross sales. So one thing is we can do better targeted marketing. So based on the model output, uh, we can do targeted marketing instead of marketing uh, cross sales to everyone, we can uh, do the marketing for the for a small set of customers that are identified by the model. And then one more thing is uh, <clears throat> after developing model, there are techniques to uh, generate local interpretations. So that means uh, if we have a specific customer who is predicted as a cross sell or not cross sell, we can actually use some of these techniques like shap, shap, uh, shap values or uh, like this like line to generate the reasons for why this particular customer was uh, predicted in this class. So then we can identify things like, okay, if, if the model says uh, a certain customer is not going to cross sell, we can see uh, whether it's because of his occupation, whether it's because of his income, whether it's uh, because of his uh, uh, low number of rider policies or so on and so on. So this can be actually used to personalize the interventions so on a case by case basis, we can uh, do, we can personalize the interventions that we do to uh, actually try to bring him to a cross sell. So we can do things like uh, provide incentives. So if, if the customer is actually not going for a cross sell because he has a large amount of lapse policies, then we can maybe uh, follow up through agents or provide incentives for him to actually bring those lapse policies to infos. And then one more thing is, uh, if the data we gather is solely for the purpose of model training, uh, we can identify the data points that are actually not very important to the model and avoid gathering them in the future so as to enhance the customer onboarding process. Uh, one more thing is, uh, since we saw that people with rider policies tend to cross sell more often, uh, we can actually, without directly taking into a cross sell, taking the customer to a cross sell, we can first promote a rider policy and then uh, take that, uh, take the customer journey to the next step by doing a cross sell. Uh, so those are the interventions that we recommend to the customer. 
and uh, that will be the end of the business presentation thank you uh, thank you uh, i have a question regarding the uh, model performance you you uh, mentioned the uh, the fun score and the rock ac scores of the best models yes. um what's the interpretation of these scores of the performance metrics uh, what's the interpretation of yeah the scores you get for your models uh so if you look at the recommendation model the macro fun would be like a an average of over all the classes so it's not a weighted average it's just a simple average so 51% would be i think uh, in such a heavily imbalanced sort of problem uh, i would think of it as a generally okay uh, per a performance because that means uh, we can get like an average of 50% even for uh, even when we include the uh, like uh, the classes with lower number of samples and the roc of course uh, it's hard, it's hard to say whether that's like a very good score because uh, the roc when the data set is imbalanced the roc tends to go up uh, the roc is it but uh, we saw like an improvement over time like when we added features the roc would go up and even our patient patient scores and the fun scores were okay like uh, as we saw so earlier uh, we had a patient on the test set of about 6% which is about three times higher than the uh, normal uh, cross cell rate uh, did you do anything regarding the the uh, data imbalance so did you try to the data, sample uh, in this round we didn't try any uh, any uh, over sampling techniques like smorty but in the first round we got the opportunity but with the time available we couldn't do that but uh, because most of the tree based algorithms which we tried to have uh, like inbuilt methods to actually handle that. We so use that those parameters. Sorry? So sorry. What was the best performing model at the end? It was a light GBM. Light GBM. For both the, for the models. Were there any insights you got from the data, I mean, the EDA part that you would like to discuss? I don't think I caught anything from the presentation. Uh, in the EDA part, uh we saw some like uh, issues in the data so one thing was uh, we saw that there were some customers like uh, in the same same snapshot same policy uh same customer they have a duplicate rows and we saw some situations where like in those duplicate rows there were like different spouses and things like that so we thought we should remove those uh, duplicates so we did the duplicate removal first. And we also saw that uh, like even the custom related attributes would change between policies. So even at the same snapshot, there were customers where uh, uh, in, the, in the first policy, even in the same snapshot, he would have only one child. Like the information would be available only for his first child. But in Ladi policy, uh, he had like three children. So things like that. So. For those sort of things, what we did was, uh, since the, we assumed that the reason for these differences is because of the data gathering process, which would have happened at like a, a per policy basis. So, for example, if if uh, if the customer like if the customer's third child information was there, even in at least one policy, we would take that. So things like that we caught from the EDA. Uh, last question from me. You said you only picked the most uh, expensive product if a customer had multiple products when you train the system, right? Yeah. Uh, do you think it's a good strategy? And what's the limitation or what's the drawback of this approach? Uh, we tried two approaches actually. So first, we tried a multi label classification. So if, if there were multiple cross selling products during that period, we, we considered both of them, like multiple labels. Uh, but the issue was uh, since the problem had asked like the best recommendation, uh, we couldn't give multiple recommendations. So then we actually changed our approach so that we even during the labeling process itself, we only select uh, the best, best product. 
So which we assume would be the one with the highest premium. Okay, thank you. That's all from me. Thanks. Could you go to your last slide? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, you're on your third point. Um, could you elaborate here? What do you mean by um, avoiding gathering unnecessary data? Is this a uh, part of your like, data cleaning steps that you came across inconsistent data? Uh, no, not exactly that. Uh, what we mean is, uh, so when we, if, if the, like, if the data get like certain data fields, if they are being gathered only for the process of like model training, uh, then actually like when we train the model and looked at the shaft values, uh, feature importances, there were like some features which had like near zero importance. So those kinds of features, maybe they can avoid gathering because it will be like tedious for the customer as well. So if, if there is no other reason actually to gather them. What do you have a um, like graph on the feature importance or like what were the key uh, like the top features uh, in your model? Uh, top features were uh, the number of enforced policies and the number of left policies were there as the top features, uh, which we actually include in the report, but we didn't uh, include in the presentation in the interest of time. Uh, uh, those are the two main uh, highest feature importances, and there was the, uh, the number of riders and uh, the main holder occupation were also quite important. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, is there any specific uh, data points you wish you would have had that would have made uh, made things easier for you? Uh, we actually thought about that, and one thing was uh, one thing we felt would be really important is the number of claims, uh, because uh, if I recall correctly, there weren't any information regarding the claims. So if we can have information like for things like vehicle insurances, health insurances, uh, there'll be like a number of claims and the value of those claims. So I, I feel those, we, we all feel that those would be important. Got it. And did you, wasn't there any importance in the agent data? Uh, agent data, uh, there were a few, but not in like top five or six, but uh, in the rest there were. Uh, if I remember the agent status, uh, was important. Uh, did you think of uh, creating new features with the agent data or is it because of lack of time you couldn't manage to do this? Uh, we created features, so mainly what we did was, uh, so the data set we had was uh, like per, per policy data set. So we had to aggregate that to a per customer level. So during that, we did some feature engineering as well. So for categorical variables, some of the categorical variables, we used like uh, count, count encoding. So we just uh, like for each of the categories, we would like sum up the occurrences. Uh, so similarly, we did those for uh, the agent data as well. Uh, and some of the numerical features we would, we. Uh, like we looked at like we looked at it at a per feature basis, and uh, some of the it, numerical data we would we replaced with the sum, or the count, or in some cases the media. Got it. Thank you. Thanks. Um, would you have some? Uh rules in your like how important do you think is to have certain rules in your recommendations like uh, your model might throw out something uh, but in the uh, customer's point of view or the business point of view it might not make sense uh, how important do you think uh, in these cases that you should have certain rules 
define in your recommendation system um i feel uh, that is that sh that should be something that should that should be discussed with the business like if the business feels okay we don't want to promote any products which are actually lower a lower value than what the customer actually has now then some some things like that then we might have to add like as a post processing step for the model output so we can like uh, take the model probabilities and then like mask out all the uh, irrelevant products according to business rules and then get the best products out of the rest so things like that i feel would be important because uh, no matter what our model will not be 100% accurate so we'll need to have some kind of like uh, business there are cases where we'll have to have some business rules uh, to like avoid things like revenue dilution because if you are recommending a product that is actually lower than what the customer has and he removes the current policy and comes a new one then that will be a problem so things like that i think it should be something closely decided with the business as well thanks That seems to be all the questions we have, right? Maybe we can move on. So judges, uh, should I end the uh, pitching session for this team? No more questions? Yes, from it, it okay. is fine. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So team uh, Random Forest Rangers, thank you very much for your presentation. And now you may leave this breakout room. Nice team Thanks. name, by the way. I like the name. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It's actually Amila's idea. Not mine. Not random to be this, sir. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, so it will be only two of us because our third members are unable to attend today. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, in that case, welcome team Wanderers. And uh, I should mention some uh, tips to you before you start your presentation. You will get six minutes for your presentation. And then the judges will have nine minutes for their queries and questions. And uh, please make sure to uh, think about the time. And for that, you may ping the screen sharing the timer countdown. That would be easy for you to keep track of time. And also keep your videos turned on throughout the presentation. And uh, after I turn off my video, you may share your screen. Your six minutes will start from the moment that you start your presentation. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are Team Wanderers from University of Morocco. Life insurance is a tool that can help the individual to accomplish variety of financial goals. There are many products in the life insurance, such as investment, protection, etc., which enables the customer to buy one or multiple products at once or uh, buy uh, additional products later, which is known as cross sell. So when you look at the benefits of the cross sell, that it reduces the operation cost per customer and also the cost to reach a customer, and it, it increases the revenue of the company along with improving the customer relationship and brand loyalty. So these benefits indicates the significance of predicting cross sell, and its prediction uh, in the future will be enable the company to, to do more pro proactive action to improve their results. So we were given a data of month, uh, monthly data of the customers 
and have to predict whether a customer will cross-sell for the next six months. And also to identify the best suitable policy models for, to recommend to them. So we followed the following uh, flow and we did a data analysis and we did data process such as input data handling and also cleaning the data. So when it came to feature engineering, we thought that the behavior patterns of the customer for a certain period of time would make an effect on whether we cross sell or not, rather than considering only one month. So we broke our uh, training data, we broke the data into three segments, which is from January to June 2019, July to December 2019, and also January to June 2020. So as an example, uh, we considered January to June 2019 as a six month, uh, considered as a six months period, and we extract the features for each and every customer using that data set. And to extract target variable, we use the following next six months, which is from July to December, to extract their uh, target variables. So as you can see on the screen, uh, it shows the uh, extracted feature which is used to train our model, such as the average premium value for the sum as well. And also we look into the number of laps and number of hours during the past six months, which indicates that the uh, customer has been uh, not falling behind his payment. And also the number of children and also number of active policy he had during the time, which is also a good indication to predict the process. Along with that, we think we were able to identify the following features on the right, which would be a which uh, would improve the performance of the model. We were unable to experiment in it due to the time constraint. So when you consider the agent seniority and its experience, it can affect the probability of the cross sell of the customer. And also we can consider the age of the main policy cost, uh, holder to uh, recommend the suitable uh, policies. And also age of his children, like uh, they might have more importance to us education. So, and also uh, using the following, the next six months of data, we were able to extract the cross sell or not and a recommendation classes. We considered the, uh, whether it's a cross sell, if, if the customer has commenced the policy during that six month period by keeping another policy active. And we also extract the recommendation classes using the policy he uh, acquired. So these are the feature importance, uh, which, is phenomenon, which indicates the importance of the features being extracted. And as you can see, some of the features we actually have more importance in the prediction. So when it came to the prediction, followed the following uh, flowchart, we, are, we uh, give a extracted features of each customer's input to a prediction model to predict the cross sell. And if it's a cross sell, uh, we input the uh, extracted features to another model, which is to predict a suitable recommendation for that model. So this is the flow that we followed uh, in uh, doing the prediction. And as you can see on the right, we use this model to do the testing to identify the best suitable model for each and every uh, uh, cross sell and recommendation. So when uh, we used the following uh, performance metrics and we considered, we gave importance to macro F1 score, AOC score, and the validation accuracy to identify the best uh, suitable model and which was the random forest model. And these are the results of the random forest classifier. And as a result, uh, we were able to train the recommendation model, but we were unable to hyper tune it. And uh, it was also a similar uh, random forest model, and these are the results of it. So, as an intervention, we have some suggestions to improve the performance of the model along with improving the cross sell rate of the company. So, we thought of uh, instead of breaking the data into six month segment, we thought of breaking the six month and only consider the first five months of the data set to extract the features for the customer, and we can use that to predict the latter six months. So like uh, we consider only January to May, as an example, consider January to May data to extract the features to predict July to December. And during one month period, let the period in middle, we, June, we can use it as a promotion period where the company can reach out to the customer to improve their cross-sell rate. And also we could consider the, uh, the available data as a time series data. So we can extract time series features and uh, feed it to RNM model. And uh, before feeding into a non -neural, uh, sorry, neural network, we can include the non-time sciences data, which will improve the prediction. So to, uh, as intervention, we can identify best target products and also we can educate the customer to show them benefits and understand, uh, to, uh, to get a more uh, understanding of the policies. So uh, as a key insight, like between, when we got through the analysis, like we should, cons uh, when you are doing the promotion, we should consider the affordability of the customer and the income level along with the occupation would be a better feature when it comes to the prediction and a uh, discount which can provide and also we should utilize the custom aids to improve the event by setting. And also we should consider the agent seniors level and experience. We can provide training for them to improve the performance of the 
uh, improve the cross sell rate of the company. Thank you, and this is the team behind. Thank you. Uh, th thank you. Can you tell us about uh, the model performances and how you selected the models? Okay. Uh, so when it came to the model, like uh, initially we were more focused on predicting the model for the cross sell. So we train the external features using the following models here. And from that, we like uh, we identified, for, but uh, we were unable to hypertune each and every model. Uh, we used the basic parameters to get the model which was having a better performance in, plural, in, in terms of prediction. So, and also this is an imbalanced data problem because the number of uh, cross sell were reduced there. So we were only able to uh, like uh, implement certain uh, imbalanced data handling techniques uh, during our experiments. And uh, from that, like uh, we considered a F1 score along with AOC score with the training val validation accuracy. So considering these three factors and along with that, we considered the normalized confusion matrix. So to identify how better it has predicted the cross cell. So those were the main uh, factors we considered to select a best model and we identified random forest had a better performance and we did uh, tuning to improve its performance. That's the time answer your question, sir. What, uh, do you th what do you think about the, uh, the scores we have? Are you happy with it or does it need some improvement? Uh, it's certain, yeah, uh, it certainly needs more imp in, uh, improvement because uh, we, we need to conduct several experiments like uh, uh, using uh, several like the imbalance data handling and how we implement it. So it can be improved like uh, as far as I say, like from the from the initial steps, like it has a uh, completely good, but it, this can be improved. It should be improved. Yeah. Um, so this is, so you have two parts of your, uh, the machine learning pipeline, right? One for the prediction, if you can make a cross cell or not. And the other one is for the recommendation. Yes. Um, and it's not clear for me the performances of these two things. So which one did you show now? With the, okay, uh, uh, sir, so like to make it clear, like this is only for the cross cell one, which I have shown here. Okay. And the latter one is for the uh, uh -huh. recommendation, but uh, the, it's it's even have more uh, uh, imbalance data handling and we didn't tune it. So the results are not really good, in, uh, not good enough, yeah. So if you go back one slide. Okay. Um, so you have the training accuracy 95 yes. uh, percent. So you have like 3% of the population is uh, cross sell clients, right? So if you just predict yeah. everybody saying, yes, yes, it's cross sell, then your accuracy will be already 97%. And what do you think is the reason that you cannot achieve even 97%, which should be the lowest? Uh, do you agree with me or is it not? Uh, so we can't say that it will be the lowest because uh, uh, the model, like uh, certain parameters in the model will adjust it towards the balanced data. So so when it comes to it, it might try to predict more of the cross cell to uh, give balanced importance. So that might be a reason. And also like if we predicted once for every, I mean like for zeros for everything, it would be 97, but that's not a real good value, yeah. And also, sir, we gave more importance to the F1 score, precision, and record, especially for the record score. Right, right. Um, okay, I think I'll let others ask questions now. Okay, sir. Thank you for your questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Adrushan, can you talk more about the business insights? Okay, sir, sure. So, uh, so when it came to the uh, like uh, business inside, like uh, so, like one of the problem we had was like we we can unable we are unable to say whether uh, the income level like the, to identify the uh, how the income level will affect the cross sell very heavy cross sell or not because we are, along with the occupation we can have the income level because both of them would improve the prediction of the cross sell along with the recommendation because we can uh, it will identify the suitable record recommendation according to the occupation as well so there might be a correlation so so that was one of the insight like we thought we could be used and also when it comes to like recommending uh, the company should focus on how affordable the customer is and also like uh, like by identifying like going through the data like how many times he has like lapsed so or paid it or paid on time so we can identify the trust like the loyalty of the customer like he has me 
not falling back short on his payment. So this will improve his trustworthiness. So those kind of uh, customer, we can give some kind of loyalty points. So we will give some kind of uh, discount when it comes when they do a cross sell. So these uh, uh, proactive actions would improve the uh, cross sell rate of the company. And also, like, uh, sir, we should consider the agency you know, and how they are handling with the uh, customers. Like, uh, like at least uh, one customer should like it's best to have one agent to handle all his policies in case of uh, like if they are in shift. So uh, it's best to have like one to one customer. So one uh, agent would handle a fixed now amount of customers. So it will like improve and like rather than changing the agent for each and every customer. So that might approach would be better. And also like uh, with time, there will be a changes in agents. So it's good to consider their senior level and to improve their uh, performance by having additional training for them. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. And so on. So this can improve the uh, recommendation model definitely. Hello, did you able to identify any like kind of like challenges uh, or that uh, that you're going to face it if you want to uh, apply this particular model into the company like if you try to identify the challenges you can like uh, come across some kind of like a solutions uh, uh, when you try to implement this your uh, implement your business model uh just one, like uh, yes. one sorry sorry no uh, yes no okay. yes what type of challenges you are going to identify uh, yes, like uh, when it comes to the recommendation from the available policies like these like as you can see these are the policies uh, we classes we were able to extract from the uh, given data so but uh, in some situation like uh, if they have a different kind of policy so that might be a effect on the model, like uh, the model won't be prepared for that kind of situation. So because in the previous data, those kind of uh, model won't be, sorry, those kind of uh, data won't be available. So, but uh, there are some like latest researches like can be blah, but it's in the previous like uh, zero shot learning or few shot learnings, like we can use those kind of methods to handle these kind of problems. But uh, even those are still in the researches. Yeah. And um, uh, just uh, that was one of the main challenges we thought of. Yeah. Does it answer your question, man? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry, do you mind going to the uh, feature list again? Just want to have a look. Okay, sure. Uh, you mean this all are uh, each yeah, yeah. have it. Uh, No, the, uh, the graph actually. Okay, sure.
maybe one last question from me. What can you do to improve your model performance? Okay, so, uh, so what we would suggest is to like uh, do more like uh, to start like working on more experiment on the uh, imbalanced data handling. Like uh, we are only able to try certain imbalanced data handling methods, and like we could focus on that to give uh, like to uh, give more importance towards the the uh, the uh, cross cell data. So that might be one of the uh, thing, and also to tune the model more, like to the hyperparameter doing hyperparameter tuning to improve uh, the uh, parameters of the model so we can identify what we best and also so like uh, we even like we extract the features in a way like uh, we could also like easily change it into a time series data and also like we could try implementing and uh, we could implement an rnn model so to identify to identify those trends and patterns so even that would improve the performance those are the, in the previous slide, you can see the features we have used. Can you show that? Yeah. In, in previous. Yeah. Here in the second column, we have showed what are the features we missed due to this time constraint. And age of the main policy uh, holder, age of the children. If we use this age of the main policy holder, it depends. Like if he is around 50 to 60, then we can recommend a good policy. And the, the probability of clustering is also increasing. And also the age and experience and seniority with, with the age and experience and experience that how he like the cross-selling probability highly depend on the age and experience. So how, lo yeah. Sorry, how long does it take to train the model? Uh, so uh, it didn't take uh, like uh, it would, I we didn't do a measurement of the computational time, but uh, roughly like uh, less than two seconds. So I mean. Then why didn't you just use these features and the rerun? Uh, the actually the model training was easier compared to extracting the feature. The extracting features for all the data took a bit of time. Yeah. The initial okay. we, we were spending time on the visualization. So like yeah, in the what are the inputs and all. So they, we didn't get time to extract all the features. Okay. Uh, dear judges, do we have any more questions for the team? Not from me. I don't. Not from me. Yeah. Not from us. Nothing from me. Okay. So, uh, hey, madams. Mm. Then, uh, team wonders. I think you did a great job. So this brings us to the end of your pitch, and now you may enter to the uh, break. Uh, enter the main lobby by exiting this breakout room. And uh, I also would like to thank the panelists for uh, judging this pitching round. Uh, Dr. Ranga Rodrigo, Senior Lecturer at the Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering, University of Martyr. Dr. Tanuja Ambegoda, Senior Lecturer at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, University of Martyr. Dr. Upeksha Ganegoda, Senior Lecturer at the Faculty of Information Technology, University of Mortua, and Mr. Tiraj Silva, Data Scientist, Octave, John Keyes Group, Mr. Asanga Gunavadana, Data Scientist, Octave, John Keyes Group, and Mr. Ragbo Pereira, Analytics Delivery Associate, Octave, John Keyes Group. Dear sirs and madams, you did a wonderful help to DataStorm 2.0 by being a panelist at the final grand finale pitching round. It was an immense support from your end and as well as from the great persons from personalities from the octave end. So this brings us to the end of the pitching round of grand finale of DataStorm 2.0. I think all the teams had a great time and we'll meet you in the main lobby. Please exit this uh, breakout room now and enter the main lobby. Thank you very much for joining. As we are reaching the end of the competition, we are proud to present our partner for DataStorm 2.0. Octave, the John Keels Group's Center of Excellence for Big Data Analytics, is the cornerstone of data-driven decision-making, 
Octave fulfills the need to finding new ways to revolutionize strategic and operational decision making and is committed to implementing world class practices across technology, practices, and learning. And now we cordially invite Mr. Yolan Seaman, head of Octave John Kills Holdings, to express his thoughts on DataStorm 2.0. Hi everyone, on behalf of Octave, the Data and Advanced Analytics Division of John Keels Holdings PLC, I would like to convey our pleasure in once again collaborating with DataStorm for the second year running. We would like to thank the Road Track Club of both the University of Moratur and the Faculty of Science at the University of Colombo for partnering with us. We are delighted with the participation this year throughout all the introductory sessions, the masterclass sessions and the Kaggle competition and very pleased to witness the presentations from the finalists. I would like to congratulate the winners and we look forward to staying engaged with the participants of DataStorm through other Octave engagements, including the Octave Insights webinar series and hopefully meet in person soon when COVID concerns subside. Octave over the last year and a half has made good progress in rolling our advanced analytics use cases across several verticals within the John Keys Group and several more are under development and our team continues to grow. I am pleased to say that we have some participants of DataStorm from the previous year who have embarked on internships at Octave. We also have a graduate program that offers a full-time role as a data science and engineering associate. And we look forward to interacting with participants interested in these positions. Finally, I would conclude by once again, congratulating the finalists and the winners. And we look forward to staying engaged with you all. Please continue to follow us for future updates on our events on our LinkedIn page, YouTube channel, and Medium account. Thank you all. Thank you very much, sir. In the next segment of our session, we shall be recognizing the honorable personalities who contributed to DataStorm 2.0 to become a huge success. Next up, we will be presenting our tokens of appreciation to all the st stakeholders who are undeniably major contributors of this project. We present our gratitude to Dr. Raj Navaratna, who provided us with all the technical assistance and came up with a case study for the competition. We are honored to present our gratitude to Mr. Sam Samararatna for guiding and mentoring us throughout. Mr. Asanga Gunawardana, Ms. Dinusha Disanayaka, Dr. Shahan Pereira, Dr. Ranga Rodrigo, Dr. Thanuja Ambegoda, Dr. Upeksha Ganegoda, Mr. Rakbu Pereira, Mr. Anup Disanayaka, Mr. Tiraj Silva, Ms. Shashini Gregory. Thank you very much, dear sirs and madams, for your utmost gratitude. We present our utmost gratitude for every one of you. Next up, I will cordially invite the president of the Rotaract Club, Faculty of Science, University of Colombo, to deliver the vote of thanks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As we conclude DataStorm 2.0, the Advanced Data Analytics Competition on an absolute high note, I would like to extend my gratitude to a few special individuals. Dr. Rajita Navaratna for his guidance and mentorship, Dr. Shehan Pereira, Dr. Ranga Rodrigo, Dr. Tanuja Ambegoda, Dr. Upeksha Ganegoda, Mr. Asanga Gunavardana, Ms. Dinusha Disanayaka, Mr. Rakbo Pereira, Mr. Anuk Disanayaka, Mr. Tirat Silva, Ms. Sashini Gregory for their valuable contribution to make this yet another successful initiative. Last but not least, I would like to thank the organizing committee of DataStorm 2.0, executive committees, board of directors, and all the members of the Rotary Clubs of the University of Moratua and Faculty of Science, University of Colombo for their undying efforts. And very specially, the participants and all the viewers. Thank you once again and hope you have a great day. Thank you very much for that words of appreciation. 
And now for the much awaited highlight of the day, announcing the winners of DataStorm 2.0. The five teams who have made it so far are Team Alpha Zero, Team Bots TND, Team Malkakulu, Team Random Forest Rangers, and Team Wanderers. So now we have reached the most awaited highlight of tonight. And that is the announcement of the winners of Data Storm 2.0. The second runners up of Data Storm 2.0 is. Team Wanderers. And the first runners up of Data Storm 2.0 is Team Random Forest Rangers. And now, one of the remaining three teams will be crowned as the champions of tonight. Will it be Team Alpha Zero, Team Bots TND, or Team Malkakudo? So, the champions of tonight and the winners of Data Storm 2.0 is Team Bots TND. Thank you very much everyone and congratulations to all the winners. Have a good night and stay safe.